Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and today we're answering your questions from the Heart Valve Society Conference in Abu Dhabi and I am thrilled to be here with Dr. Hanukkah Takenberg. She's from Erasmus University and Dr. Takenberg, could you introduce yourself to our patients so they have an understanding of what you do there? Okay, yeah, I'll do so. I was trained uh, as a medical doctor, but early on in my career, I spent a couple of years overseas in Los Angeles, actually. And that's where my love for research started. So I changed my career and basically went into uh, heart valve disease research ever since. Uh, I returned back to the Netherlands, uh, where I was born, and um, actually started uh, a career as a scientist within a department of cardiac surgery at the Erasmus University Medical Center. Uh, became a clinical epidemiologist and now I'm a professor of clinical decision making in cardiothoracic interventions. To be put simply, uh, I study how we can improve difficult decisions in complex patients like heart valve patients. And specific to heart valve disease, this is in your research very, very central to what you do, as I understand. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct, yeah. I think heart valve disease, ever since I returned to Rotterdam, has been at the core of what I do. Uh, I have a deep desire to improve decision-making uh, for patients and with patients who have valvular heart disease. And while I started looking at outcomes of patients after heart valve surgery, uh, over time, I realized it's not only about clinical outcomes, it's also about how do you get back to life and how do you optimally, optimally lead your life and how you as a patient can actually make a difference in uh, managing your disease, being involved in uh, the management of your disease and being involved in the decision making. I think uh, it uh, has many advantages, not only to you personally, but I think also to quality of care in the broadest sense. Great, well we are gonna, and I just wanna, on behalf of all the patients, uh, I wanna thank you for everything you're doing because I know it's very rare to hear from a clinician about bringing the patient into the decision-making process. So thank you for doing, I know you, earlier we talked about the models that you've been created, you've been creating, so thank you again for everything you're doing. Now we're gonna answer, speaking of the patients, their questions. That's right. And so we're gonna start with a question all about mechanical valves. I understand you know a lot about mechanical valves. And this question came, came in from Dwayne Lemon, who writes to us, hi Adam, what is the lifespan of people who have more than one mechanical valve and have to live the rest of their lives on anticoagulants? Okay, so it's about the lifespan of people and not about the lifespan of the valve. Uh, I, we know that people who receive mechanical valves, if you look at uh, the accumulation of data uh, on outcome of people who have a mechanical valve, uh, life expectancy, of, of, of course, first of all, is dependent on how old you are. I mean, the older you get, the longer your life expectancy. Uh, but we know that young uh, patients in particular have a reduced life expectancy after implantation of a mechanical valve. And now I'm talking about people below the age of 50. And the younger you are, the shorter your life expectancy. And that's uh, a bit of a sad thing. Uh, we would like to improve life expectancy. Uh, a lot of the surgeons are not even aware that life expectancy of younger adult patients is so much limited in comparison uh, to uh, their peers in the general population. With the exception of the ROS procedure, both mechanical valves and bioprosthetic valves are associated with a reduced life expectancy in uh, younger adult patients. The life expectancy uh, of a mechanical valve, that's what I also want to talk about. Uh, supposedly, it's designed to last a lifetime. Um, and that's true. I mean, this is made out of carbon, uh, artificial material, uh, and therefore uh, very durable. Uh, nevertheless, we do see patients who receive mechanical valves requiring repeat operations. So the fact that you have a mechanical valve that was built to last a lifetime does not mean that you will not uh, have a reoperation in your lifetime. 
And that's one of the things I think we cannot put too much emphasis on. That there's other reasons for valves, for example, they become obstructed because of tissue ingrowth or there's an infection on the valve. Mm. These are also reasons to be reoperated. And back in the old days, and I've been in the business for some time, since uh, 1996, that is, uh, it was really a big thing, a reoperation with uh, increased mortality risk compared to a primary aortic valve replacement. But nowadays, I think with improvements in care and improvements in the monitoring of patients, this uh, risk has gone down considerably. So if you are a patient who has had multiple mechanical valves during their lifetime, your life expectancy, and you're uh, not elderly, your life expectancy compared to your peers is lower than normal, but is not that much affected by the risk of a reoperation. I hope I made that clear. I think you definitely did, and I know that I know that helped me understand, and I'm sure it helped Wayne. And Dr. Tockenberger, I want to thank you again for your time and all your dedication to this space. We really appreciate it, and thanks for being here with me today. And as we always say here at HeartValveSurgery.com, keep on ticking. <laughs>